Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and let's hope the sound is okay, as it was not on my Wordle video uh, yesterday, which was very annoying. If you do want to hear a version of that where you can hear me speaking, um, we do put them up on Instagram a day or two after they go up on YouTube. Um, so Wordle, not done in a minute, will be available on Instagram either now or very soon. Anyway, that was then. Um, this is now, I think Simon had sound problems yesterday as well, so uh, not me. I also managed to have card problems where I put up the wrong rules to the puzzle. Oh, sometimes days are terrible. Anyway, let's hope today isn't as terrible. And we've got a debut on the channel from uh, James Book with his puzzle freelance. So I'm looking forward to having a go at this. Um, and I do want to mention that coming up in three days time, we've got our April monthly reward. It will be dropping on April 1st, but no pranks, just a hard puzzle set from Skunkworks who have created a pack based on the nightmare constraint that Rift Clown came up with, um, where cells and knights move apart, can't add up to five or 15, and it has some very odd effects on puzzles. We've done one puzzle on the channel, but it's a brilliant pack, um, great production values, 19 puzzles. You have to solve five for the prize to enter the prize draw. You have to solve all 19 for the shout out. Our guess is that the number of shout outs will be reduced next month. We will see. I might be wrong. Um, you guys are very clever, very persistent, very able, and you may well get through the whole pack. Give it a try. Um, now, what else is going on? We've got Gas 2 out, the genuinely approachable Sudoku Part 2. Um, I've also, that that's one of our apps. We have a number of apps, all on different puzzle types, and uh, you will find Killer Sudoku amongst them, which is one of the features of today's puzzle. Do check those out along with our merchandise and Sven Sudoku Pad. Also, if you are able to see either BBC One or BBC World, which is obviously worldwide, um, then apparently they've, they've asked me to appear in a BBC business programme at the extraordinary hour of 5.30 British summer time um, on Friday morning. So I don't know when that'll be for other, I guess that'll be half past, no, half past midnight in, um, Eastern Standard Time, so 12.30 in the morning, Friday time. Have I got that wrong or right? I don't know. I don't know. You'll have to work it out. I can't work it out, certainly not when I get up at that time in the morning to speak to them about the, uh, the business of puzzle solving, I guess. So anyway, we'll look forward to that. Sometimes these things don't happen also. They line you up and then don't use you, so we'll see. But that potentially is coming up and uh, anyway check out all the links under the video the first one is to this puzzle um, in which the rules are these normal Sudoku rules apply so we're going to put one to nine in every row column and three by three box in the grid digits don't repeat in a cage and sum to the given total so these ones add up to 40 and don't include any repeats. A digit in a gray square is even. A digit in a gray circle is odd. And digits on a marked diagonal cannot repeat. And we have two such in this puzzle, sometimes called X Sudoku. So do give it a try on the link under the video. You may be able to judge from the video length how hard it is, but I am gonna start now. Let's get cracking. And we've got a number. A large number of three cell 14 cages. Um, oh, right. So here's something I know about diagonal Sudoku. And, and yeah, the positions on it that are equidistant from the center. So the four cells I've highlighted, which are the corners of the grid, they're all equidistant from the one. And these four cells all have to be different. And that is because they all see each other. Now, what do I mean by see each other? Well, they rule each other out from being the same digit. So if you look at this one, for instance, in the top right corner, clearly that sees that cell on the horizontal, can't be the same, sees that one 
on the vertical can't be the same. And on this marked diagonal along which digits cannot repeat, it sees that one. So this can't be the same as any of the other corners, and that applies to all of them. Therefore, they are four different digits. And given that they're all marked as even, those are a set of the digits 2, 4, 6, 8. Now, in this cage, we cannot have a 2 here, because to make the maths work, we would need to put an 11 here. So we, can ha we can't have an 8, because there's an 8 in the box. So we've got 4 or 6. Uh, leaving this cell to be 9 or 7 to make up the total correctly. Um, these two can't be 4, just because there is a 4 in the column already. Um, OK. After that, I've probably run out of excitement. OK, this odd number sees a 1, and it's in a 7 cage. It has to be 3 or 5, going with a 2 or a 4 to make up the 7 total. Now, what about this 40 cage? Oh, this 40, oh, right. The 40 cage is 7 digits. Um, yes, so it helps to know a certain secret here, which I will happily share with you because you are one of my favorite people. And the secret is this, that every row column and every other set of one to nine, every box, for instance, in a Sudoku, but any other set of one to nine always adds up to the same number. And that number is 45. Now, this 40 cage, which contains a one, you will note, um, misses two of the nine digits because it has seven different digits. It's missing two of the nine digits. And those two add up to the difference between 45 and 40, which is five. They don't include a one, so the missing digits are two and three. Right, and that means that there is a seven in the cage. Seven can't be in those cells. It's in one of those two, and that immediately fixes this as a nine. Uh, to make the maths work in this cage, that's a four. Now we can take four out of that cell. Um, could we do more here? We don't have two and three in this. Oh. OK, so two and three are not in the 40 cage, but they must be in column five. That's one of the rules. Only one of them can get in this cage. So one of them has to sit here. And now, since none of these contain two, two in the column must be in one of these cells. And this seven cage can't contain a two five. Oh, and it can't contain four three in its other digits either. Right, these other two digits in the seven cage, to make the total 14, have to add up to seven. There are three combinations to do that. One is one six, and we will come back to that. One is two five, and we can't use that because the two in the box is in one of these two cells. The other is three four, and the reason we can't use that is because it would make both of these cells into twos, which isn't allowed. So we come back to the one six possibility. That means that these corners are two and eight, and that corner in the top left must be the six because of the rule we established about how all these corners see each other. So, now one of these digits must go in one of these two cells because in this seven cell 40 cage, which is missing two and three, it has all the other digits from one to nine in apart from two and three. And one of these two is five or four. And whichever one that is can't go in these cells in this cage. So it must go in one of these two. So they're, I, they're either a seven five pair or a seven four pair. This might help us finish this. Uh, yes, we've got a six in the cage. Well, we didn't actually need the five four business. Once we've got that one, we know this isn't an eight pair made up of one seven. We know it's not a pair made up of two six because that would involve a repeat digit. So that's three five. Now we know this is a seven four pair. Now we know the four in the column is down here in the seven cage and we can complete three more digits down there. This group of cells is five, six, eight, nine. And some of those are impossible. Um, so let's remove the corner mark. That is a four seven pair. 
this is two or six and this is two or eight this is a classic triple which we traditionally say is as useless as a chocolate teapot um, because each of the cells has two possibilities but each of the two possibilities admits a combination that can be filled uh, so we can't actually resolve them from those possibilities uh, a friend of mine recently used the phrase as useless as an ashtray on a motorbike which i quite like as well um, anyway enough of that oh look eight on the diagonal so that's quite straightforward to sort out the two bottom corners uh, we can't repeat that eight on this positive diagonal now the remaining cells on this diagonal are three five six and seven so there's a three in one of these two cells and the other pair of cells in this cage add up to 11 which can't be 3 8 because that would involve a repeat and can't be 2 9 because there's already a 2 in the box so it's either 3 6 5 or 3 7 4 and I don't know which it is um, this 14 cage doesn't have an 8 oh there's a 3 in that cage so these aren't threes the three in the bottom row is in one of those two right now this 14 cage doesn't have an eight and a three i don't think that's quite enough to make progress ah no but it, it does give rise to a very useful technique in diagonal sudoku and do use this this is a very good tip not a, not our usual fatuous knowledge bomb but if you can find along a diagonal or rather along the boxes that a diagonal passes through if you can find a digit that fails to appear on the diagonal in two of those boxes that's quite powerful and i'm talking about three along this diagonal it fails to appear on the diagonal in box nine because it's in one of those two cells it fails to appear on the diagonal in box five because it's sitting there therefore it must appear on the diagonal which contains all of the digits one to nine in box one and obviously given this three five pair we know where it does appear so we get those as a result of that it's it is a very useful thing and i do sometimes forget to look out for other instances of digits that have clearly failed to get on the diagonal um it's a it is a very useful technique which um i will be using I hope when I go to the UK Sudoku Championship in Derby this weekend where I believe that on the menu there is a diagonal Sudoku and I would expect to attempt it and I would expect that to be a key technique anyway enough waffle there's a three in one of those two cells in fact that three has told us where the three is in this box that's very nice so we get three there that's not a three that's not a three now and this is I this is a pair that adds up to 11 this is either a 4 7 or a 5 6 pair I can't see immediately a way to tell which um, so we will just keep looking for things we can do let's have a look at this diagonal now we've got 6 3 1 8 on it 2 4 5 7 9 to go I don't know how to do those how about this box um four seven one two and three must appear in this box and they are not in this cross shape but i don't think that tells me where they go this odd digit oh this is an odd digit of course so that resolves the seven and four in box two um probably doesn't do anything else well let's not count any chickens four is in one of these two cells it because of these fours we know it's somewhere there in the box actually duh it can't be there because of that four and it can't be here because of the four on the diagonal so we can place it there seven is in one of these three but it's not ruled off either diagonal or the odd circle so that four may be a bit of an outlier oh no yeah i don't know four is in one of these cells i can't i thought i might be able to tell whether four is in that 14 cage which would have been quite helpful but i don't think i can however 
No, I can't rule four out of that cell either. Um, again, I'm looking for these digits that can't be on one diagonal or the other. Right, that can't be a four because we've got a four on that diagonal. So one of the 11 forming possibilities here has been ruled out. Two, three, one, eight, nine, four. These digits on the diagonal are from five, six, and seven. What does that mean for these? It means at least one of two or nine is on this diagonal. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let me find something else. There's a three in one of those two cells. Um, there is, these are from four, five, and nine because they see every other digit. Three, four, nine. Three, four, nine. I'm still puzzled that we haven't made any progress on this 14 gauge at all. No, I can't see what's going on there. One, seven, six, two, four, three. So those are from five, eight, and nine. Not getting anything out of that either. Right. Let's think about this five, six, seven triple again. This one can't be a seven. I've just noticed that from this. So one of these two is a seven. They both see that cell, which can't be a seven. Not very interesting. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Six. That can't be a six by ordinary Sudoku. Six is in one of these three. I was just wondering if six can't be on that diagonal or here. Oh, what about two? That's a much better question. Where is two in box nine, uh, box five that I'm highlighting? Clearly not on the circle. And none of these have got a pencil mark two as a possibility. So it's in one of these two. It's on the diagonal here. Now, what's that going to tell us? If two's on the diagonal there, it has to be off it in this box. So it's in one of those two cells. Now the 14 cage doesn't have a two. Could the 14 cage have a nine? Yes, it would be nine, one, four. One would have to be off the diagonal. If it doesn't have a nine, it can't have an eight. The next lower digit is seven, but it would need another seven and it couldn't go with two, five or three, six. So again, it would have to have a one on it and we'd know where the one would go here. If it doesn't have nine, eight or seven on, then it's too low, is it? No, six, five, three, but that's not possible because of that. Three, right. There has to be a one in this 14 cage. That's really interesting. I didn't expect that. I suppose ruling out two and three, I should have looked at the numbers from the bottom up. If you didn't have a one, a two or a three, the minimum numbers would be four, five, six, and that's too many. So you do need a one. It can't be on that diagonal. We can place it in the cage. It goes with two digits that are up to 13 and don't include an eight or a six, because they're already used on the diagonal. So that must be nine, four. Wow, I did not see that coming. That's very interesting. So eight, four, nine, one, three, six. We've got two, five, and seven left to go on the diagonal. And look what that does in the central box. We've suddenly got a two, five, six, seven quadruple. I mean, the, the rule about equidistance from the center does apply because they all see each other, but they're all in the same box anyway, so it's not really very interesting. But anyway, that leaves eight and nine in these two cells, and we can tell from by being given the odd one, which is which. That's nine, that's eight. Um, let's take out the, oh no, we knew that couldn't be seven. I was gonna take out the corner marks, I am going to. There we go. Um, now that nine and that eight, the eight looks up and fixes our chocolate teapot triple, which is now as useful as Marusha Dark's wonderful chocolate teapot that was sent to us 
that Simon instantly took off me. Now, one of those two is a five on this diagonal. So we put the six there, the seven there, and we're left with a two five pair on the diagonal, and that's a seven. And we finish off, well, I mean, we will finish off that diagonal later, but for now we can finish off the positive diagonal with a five here, a six to make the cage work, we take five out of those cells, one, eight, seven left to go in box seven, but along box row nine, we can put a three, five pair in there. Two, seven, six, we know that that's the seven because there's a two and six in the row already. Two, six, nine, four, three. One of these is a five. Oh yes, now we got that six. So this is a five, nine pair left in the cross-shaped cage. Uh, can't finish the rest of the cells in that box. That seven though has resolved this as an eight on the left of the grid. Uh, sorry, I was trying to put an eight in there. There we go. Now this is a three nine pair, which we can fill in thanks to the nine on the odd circle. This is a five eight pair, which we can't fill in. But let's use that three and look up no, can't resolve that. I think we're quite close. Now we've got four in one of those two cells and we've placed it, so we know all about that. Um, one, three, seven, eight. Right, that's the only place for four in box one. That sorts out four and nine down at the bottom. Two can't be there, so it's in one of these two. I don't know. That's not finishing off anything. Okay, I'm going to pencil mark now. Two's definitely in those. So two's in one of these. Three's on the left side. We've we got one and eight. Eight's in the top segment somewhere, but one could be anywhere in the box. Okay, that was a very unsuccessful pencil marking jaunt. Okay, what will we find to resolve more? That is two or five by virtue of everything else that it sees. Six, six has to be in one of those two cells. I didn't get anything done. One, three, seven, eight. This is five or six. Um, almost got a triple. This is five, six. Oh, or three. No, bother. Yeah, that's all not resolved. I feel like we've done most of the work here. We've certainly used the diagonals. We've used all the cages. We've basically filled them. Ah, oh, this one six pair are actually resolved. Oh, that's going to be perhaps quite significant. Oops, six there is what I meant to write. No, that's a chocolate teapot quadruple. How irritating. As soon as you get one digit looking at them to sort them out, it'll resolve them all instantly. Oh, look, nine in this box can't be in any of those cells. So we place nine. I didn't spot that. You've been shouting it at the screen because you're very smart and I'm proud of you. Um, that is from two, five or six in the column. Nine, four, three here. So eight is in one of those two. Seven, six, again, still struggling along. Four, six, four, three, nine. I just need to find the right digit to look at. I've also got eight in one of those two. That is five or six. Oh, I'm sure this is basically done. Um, there might still be an odd little y-wing or coloring exercise to do yet let's find out one of these is a seven one of those is a seven hmm one of these is a five that's definite i, th I don't know am i just missing something very obvious i probably am one, six, three, four, nine, 
two, eight, five. That's one or seven. Ah, nine in the first column has to be here. Well, that's quite big. That's going to get quite a lot of things done. It's going to fix this five, nine in the cross. It's given me a one, two, which is going to resolve my chocolate teapot quadruple. And yeah, it's going to do all of rows three. Give me in fact that three looks down to the bottom. The five looks back up to the top. Got almost all of rows one, two, three done. And column nine, that was huge, that nine. Was it a nine? Yes, nine in the first column. So it was nine there and nine there. I should have been concentrating harder on nines for some reason. This is a six, seven pair. They're easily done now. Um, six in column two, that gives me eight in column two and eight in column eight. Let's remove some corner marks. This is a one, two pair now. Five, eight, two, five. We still need to get, oh no, we don't need to get any acrosses to do those. We've got a two sitting on top of a five or two. So that's gonna finish us off. One, two, one here that I've just typed in a zero, two and five in these positions and one pair left at the top. No, one pair in box eight as well. Eight and five there, nice puzzle, not too difficult. And uh, yeah, a really entertaining flow to that. So I hope you had a go. It's a decent puzzle by James. Thank you very much for sending it to us and we hope to hear more from you. Um, hope you had fun with that puzzle and I hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.